Thank now, you. you've spent time in Colombia over the past three decades, and you know that September 2016 marked the start of a very long process. What has been the reaction to the news from the organizations you're close to there? Well, I, th I think it's a combination of sadness uh, that, that, uh, that, that the peace process is uh, even more at risk now than, than ever. Uh, at the same time, not really surprise. Uh, the, the government of Colombia has failed to uh, come through with its commitments, uh, especially to protect the people who did lay down their arms. Uh, so I think that the response is, uh, yes, sadness that this has happened, but also some understanding about why, and uh, and then hope that, that somehow we can all get this back on the road again, because the the have a, losing the opportunity for peace uh, that we were also hopeful about uh, three years ago uh, is, is just tragic beyond beyond words. Jim, can you describe the role of Uribe and Duque throughout this peace process? What have been the biggest breaches? I, I think that the uh, former president Uribe and uh, the current president uh, Ivan Duque have uh, been obstacles to peace, um, and it's disappointing to say that. Uh, you know, I mean, we all took a big chance on this. Uh, the former president, the other former president um, Juan Manuel Santos, may not have been all that any of us hoped for in terms of social justice and 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 peace but he at least understood that uh colombia needed to have um a, a much greater level of social and political peace so that other things could happen and and you know his view was a kind of a capitalist development view uh but the but the folks who who wanted peace and wanted greater social justice uh took a chance with that and, uh, you know, got, I think, a reasonable deal in 2016. Um, so, but, but Uribe and, uh, and Duque uh, have always opposed that and they're backed by this uh, array of uh, paramilitary groups that, that never disarmed. Um, the, those people attacked, both the, 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 the former fighters who laid down their arms and other leaders of social movements in Colombia. And I mean, we're talking about hundreds of people uh, uh, who've been killed in the past uh, two and a half, three years. And, and that's the, the tragedy of, of uh, what's become of the peace process. We need to get it back on track. Yeah, you raised the issue of uh, that Colombians have been raising for quite some time about the climbing number of killings of campesinos indigenous and social leaders throughout the country. And since the 2016 signing of the accord, the targeted killings of combatants, former combatants, um, since laying down their arms. How long has this been going on? Oh, like I, I, people draw the, draw a line at different points. And, and, and so that, that, that's how we lose track of the numbers. Uh, but yeah, so so I mean, before 2016, you could say, well, you know, there was a war going on and this happened and that happened and both sides were responsible and what have you. But since uh, September 2016, um, there's been a peace accord. Uh, before that, there were there were um, um, ceasefires and whatnot. Uh, but after the signing of the peace accord, uh, we've seen this uh, actual increase again of uh, killings of social leaders and then the, 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 the killings also of the former combatants. Um, you have a peace agreement. There should be no killing of the former combatants. And, and despite uh, pressure, not, not just from uh, people on the left, but the, but, the, but the international community, the governments that had been involved in uh, trying to negotiate the, cease, the, the ceasefires and the eventual peace accord, all of them denounced the continued killing of the, the social movement leaders and the, 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 the targeted assassinations of the, the, the fighters who laid down their arms. And you're in North America. What kind of role do you see the U.S. and Canadian governments playing as the majority of Colombian people continue to struggle for peace? Are they helping or hindering this process? Well, we've had some uh, engagement with the Canadian government recently uh, over Colombia, and uh, they say that uh, peace continues to be the top priority and that they support the peace process and that they continue to meet with the civil society organizations and so on. And, and I, I wish that they would put 
the energy into that agenda that they put into, you know, well, it would be topic for a different day, but uh, subverting Venezuelan government. Um, so, so I think we can continue to press the Canadian government for change. The U.S. government has a different agenda, and I, I, I don't see a whole lot of hope uh, in uh, you know, from Trump or Pompeo uh, to to get behind the peace process. But I think people in the United States, uh, the civil society organizations that, that have accompanied this process, the churches, labor, uh, peace organizations, uh, they will continue to press their government for a, a better attitude towards peace in Colombia. Because what, what we need now is, is solidarity with the, the social movements and all the people who've been working for peace in Colombia throughout these many generations.